welcome back to the Museum of Cornish Life. My name is Tasha Fulbrook. I'm the Finds Liaison Officer here with the Portable Antiquity Scheme. And I'm here today just to take you through a quick tour of our, our current archaeology exhibition, uh, which is Archaeology in Cornwall, a behind the scenes look from past to present. And this explores how things were made in, 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 in history and explores some of the archaeology collection that we have here and also the work of the Portable Antiquity Scheme, which is what I work for, and it is a partnership scheme with the British Museum to record archaeological finds by members of the public. So I will take you to our first case and show you around. So our first case here explores uh, lithics and stone tools, um, which are some of our earliest um, tools in, in history, one of our earliest evidence of the human population. Um, and really fascinating the way that they were worked. Um, and here you can see an example of, of a reenactment of someone flint napping, um, which is a process of striking a big core of flint uh, with, a, with a tool or an antler um, or a stone tool, and then just working the, tool, uh, the flint into a shape like an arrowhead, for example, as you can see in the case here, we have a flint bark and tanned arrowhead, which has been finely worked and pressure plate into that shape. Um, we also have some Neolithic, uh, sorry, prehistoric flint scrapers, um, and they would, could be useful tools for skinning animals or removing fatty deposits from highs. Um, we have some greenstone access, which are local to Cornwall, flint knives, and also Paleolithic hand tools. So all of these kind of um, tools give you an idea of how people lived and, and, and how hunter-gatherer types could produce these kind of things. Um, so it's a really interesting insight into, into early history. So I'm going to move you onwards um, into our Cornish Garoic Pottery um, case. Uh, if you haven't seen one of the wonderful videos that was made about Cornish Garoic Pottery, which is on loop in the museum, I will link it in to the, the uh, box of video description and you can check it out. So here you can see some Cornish Garoic Pottery fragments. Um, and if you've watched the video, you'll know that it's quite easy to identify um, Cabaret clay because it has lots of white flecks in it and as the lady mentioned it kind of looks like hobnob biscuit as you can see in front of you um, so really nice um, examples that we have here um, it's generally believed that the clay was taken away from the lizard uh, where it's local to which is why it's so local to Halston and it was used for cooking and everyday domestic use um, we also have in this case um, some spindle walls and spindle walls are a really fascinating object um, and I'll link in a lovely video of someone using one to show you how they were used um, but they, as you can see there's these kind of stone weights and they were used and they were attached to a drop spindle as you can see here and then basically the spinner would spin that and the weight of the stone wall would keep it in motion so that the spinner could weave yarn and, and, and later for making into textiles, as you can see in this picture here. So that these kind of objects give you a really in, nice insight into how people were living in the past, but also how archaeologists, from knowing how people made things, can use this as a way of identify, identification and how we identify objects by knowing how they were made. So I'm going to take you on quickly to um, our little photo gallery here, which is photographs of excavations that are taking place in Cornwall. So these are all local Cornwall sites. Um, we have one here of Kynance Co, where a lot of our Gabriel pottery can, has come from. Um, so really nice way to link the exhibition into it. And it's nice for people to see these kind of things in archaeological in practice. Um, I'll move you on to the uh, next case, and the next case is for the Port of Antiquity Scheme in a slightly bit more detail. Um, as I mentioned, the Port of Antiquity Scheme is a partnership scheme, and we record archaeological artefacts only over 300 years old on our publicly accessible database. And this case just kind of gives you an idea of the things that we record on the database and the things that uh, we're likely to see. Um, even though we get mainly metal detectorists, we don't just record metal objects, we record flint, pottery, beads, spindle walls, all those kind of things on our database. So this is kind of gives you a nice example of things that we'll get in. So we've got some Roman coins here, some Iron Age beads, some flint arrowheads, but also this really nice um, post-medieval dress hook. And this is a really, really interesting artifact because 
it, because of its precious metal content, it comes under the Treasure Act. And I'll link the Treasure Act below so you can read a bit more about it. But basically, through the Treasure Act, museums have the unique op uh, uh, opportunity to acquire objects through this process. And then this in particular object was found by a net detectorist nearby to Helsin and then acquired by the Museum of Cornish Life so that it can be on public display, that it's not getting lost in private collections or being sold. And it just means that there's this really nice link from archaeology belonging to, to everyone um, and, and people can see these kind of objects on display in local museums. And it also gives people a really nice insight into their local history. So thank you for joining me on this really short Whistletop um, tour of our exhibition. If you cannot make it down to Helston, I hope this has helped um, explore our exhibition a bit more. But if you can, please do. It's on till the 10th of July and you can see these artefacts up close. Um, I'll also link the Portable Antiquity Scheme below and a few videos that I mentioned so that you can find out a bit more about archaeology. Thank you so much. Bye.